afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the second webinar, uh, Road to Lisbon. And uh, today uh, is going to be uh, held by uh, a member of our, of our consortium, Dr. Angel Martin. He's a telecommunication engineer with a PhD in the field of QoS and 5G networks in the context of 5G Meta. He is leading the development of the platform for VComTech from their behalf. For um, the scope of the webinar today, uh, we, uh, we will focus on how connected and automated mobility application on service developers can use the 5G Meta platform to get specific data from target locations, which is something that is of high interest in card data. Thus, this session has a technical orientation overviewing in the interface to, the, to be employed and some example to connect to data floor. Without further ado, I will leave the floor to uh, Angel. Angel, you have now the floor. Okay, so thank you so much, Giuseppe. Welcome everybody uh, to, to this webinar. As um, Giuseppe has said, uh, my name is Angel Martin from Beacon Tech and I would like to say welcome to the second webinar where we will present the way third parties should use the 5G Meta platform. First, let's have a look uh, at the general architecture of 5G Meta platform in order to understand how it works from a high level perspective. Then it will be easier to understand how third parties are supposed to use it. So in a glimpse, 5G Meta is an IoT platform focused on connected and, autom and automated mobility services and applications. And this way, 5G Meta has been tailored for application and service developers focused on car data. So if you are planning to develop an application that exploits data that comes from a vehicle, uh, this platform uh, will be very interesting uh, very interesting for you, but uh, what is outside the, the 5G Meta platform as users are car owners, drivers, passengers, and so on. So the main focus are application developers. Here we can see the three different tiers of 5G Meta. First, we have the sensors and devices, the 5G Meta platform itself, on top of mobile networks and cloud infrastructures, and then we have the third party service and application developers. What are supposed to need to consume or to produce data in real time from these sensors and devices. So essentially, third parties can consume data from the sensors and devices in real time or produce even messages that are received to, for, uh, by the sensors and devices that are in a, a specific area. This way, 5G Meta is a sophisticated IoT messaging platform connecting sensors and devices and CCAM dev services. Nothing else than that, okay? Another thing that we have also to consider once we are designing the way we will uh, use the 5G Meta platform is that there are three aspects that are important to, to take into account. The first one is that the data produced is sent to consumers in real time, meaning that 5G Meta doesn't perform any cache or storage. So this is not there in the platform, okay? Then the sensors and devices use common topics. So they they know, depending on the type of data that they want to share, which is the, 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 the IoT topic that they have to use, but the sensors and the, that, but the consumers that comes from, from third parties uh, have individual topics that they can use according to the configuration that they have established in the 5G Meta platform. So each developer will have a set of IoT topics that are pr produced specifically to him, okay? Okay, so uh, to configure and perform this, this, to get at the end these IoT topics, we need to configure the data that we are interested in as third parties, okay? In order to do that, we provide as 5G Meta a set of open API uh, interfaces in order to uh, be used by third parties. 
Specifically, we have four different APIs, which are needed by third parties in order to get an IoT topic. From the, once they have this IoT topic, they can use it in order to read or write data in, in it, in this, in this IoT topic. The first uh, API is the identity. This API is employed in order to subscribe or to log in into the 5G meta platform. The second one is the discovery, which is used in order to guess the list of locations that are used in 5G meta in order to, to get to get data or to pro, pro, process that data. Then we have the data flow. The data flow is employed in order to get the list of data types provided in a specific area and to configure a data query. And finally, we have the instance. The instance is used in order to book for computing assets that are required in order to bridge the communication between the sensors and devices and the third party applications. Okay, so now let's see how we use these APIs from a step-by-step -step point of view. So the first thing that we have to, to, to use is uh, to get a, an ID. Once we have this ID, then we have to browse from the available locations and data types that are managed by the 5G Meta platform. Then we will book a set of assets that will be used in order to process the data samples before we, we as third party can access to them. And finally, what we need to do is once we have config, once we have uh, booked everything and identified the locations and the data that are relevant to us, to configure a data query uh, in order to get an IoT topic. Okay, now in more detail, we can see this sequence uh, using the different APIs and the inputs and the outputs that each one provides, okay? In order to, to at the end, have an IoT topic where we can read or write messages. Okay, so the first uh, step is that the developer needs to get a token to access the platform from his or her credentials. Once we have this token, the developer gets the set of locations where the data is being produced using tiles. What is a tile? A tile is a rectangular area. It's something that comes from, from a standard, okay? Then we have, then once we have identified the tile that we are interested in, the developer needs to get the data types that are available in a specific, in a specific area. So for example, if we are interested in the area of Madrid, I need to get the different uh, data types that are available in, in the tile that is covered by Madrid, okay? Once we have the different data types, the next step is to decide, okay, I have identified what are the locations that, that are relevant to me. I have identified the different data types that, that I would like to, to, to connect to. The next step is to book for um, different processing assets in order to get this data, to connect my application with the uh, producers and sensors and devices. Okay, for that, the next step is to um, get the ID of the infrastructure that uh, I am targeting. So imagine that uh, uh, we have a set of different um, uh, processing infrastructures, we, we need to get the infrastructure ID that is covered in Madrid, okay? So we provide as a tile this geographical area and then I get uh, this ID. With this ID, I get in the next step, the available profiles of processing uh, capacities. I mean, this a level will, will mean a set of uh, CPUs, GPUs, RAM and so, and, and so on and I will select one of them. It is important that uh, once we have uh, selected one of them, I need to book the uh, assets from a specific infrastructure in order to process that data. So at the end, what I will provide is the ID of the infrastructure, the data type that I, I'm interested in, and the level that I want to contract, okay? Once we have done that, 
we have already booked a set of resources, a set of computing resources in a specific infrastructure. The last step, the developer needs to get the IoT topic and for that it needs to provide the tile, the, the data type and the level that it has been contracted in order to finally get an IoT topic in order to use it. Okay, let's see each step in more detail. The first step is to set the access uh, through credentials and to login into the platform. So uh, we have for that a, a graphical user interface, uh, then a, a, a third party ap application developer could register itself and then it can use it in order to log into the platform. Alternatively, also we have an, IOP, an uh, open API that is here in order to um, get the token or to update the token in order to access the, the 5G Meta platform from a programmatic way. In the next step, in the second step, once we have uh, already the credentials in order to access the platform, as I have said before, the next step is to list the geographic tiles, the geographic areas where the platform is present and from where the data is coming. Okay, so for example, we execute uh, we we execute the, the a call for this for this function and we get here a set of, of uh, geographic tiles that can be overlapped okay so the thing is to 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 identify which one is the one that we are that is relevant for our sicam application the third step is to get the list of the types available in a specific tile so uh, once I have used the, uh, a tile coming from the previous step, I can see here the different data types that are available, CITS, image, video, whatever, okay? And this is provided by this API. The fourth step is to get the ID of the infrastructure that is providing, that is operating in a specific tile. So uh, using the same example that as, be, as before, once I have identified that this is the tile that is relevant to my application, I need to get the ID that is that somehow represents the infrastructure that is there. Okay. With this with this ID, the next step is to get the available set of resources that are there. For example, a level called medium provides four CPUs, no GPU, and four gigabytes of RAM. So once we have selected which one we will use, we need to go to this other API and saying what is the ID that is the one interesting for us, uh, we need to declare the data type, the kind of, of level, in, in, this, in this case, uh, medium. And with that, I will need I will get as a response uh, an okay, a 200 uh, in the case uh, the resources are booked for us or an error with a log saying that uh, maybe the resources are, uh, are not uh, available or any other uh, error that uh, is needed to, to, be, to be taken into account by, by the developer. Okay, so once we have book a set of resources, the next step is to get the IoT topic. So we have all the design already done. We know that we, we are interested in CITS images. We already book a, a small um, level. In terms of computing assets, we have identified the uh, tile that we are interested in. And then and from that uh, API, what will be returned is the specific uh, IoT topic that uh, is needed to be used by the third party application. Okay, so once the different steps are explained, it is important to understand that there are different aspects that uh, can be configured by a third party in order to adapt what is provided by the 5G Meta platform to their interest or um, um, setup. Okay. In this case, we have three different aspects that are uh, needed to take into account by the third-party applications, developers, 
The first one is the location area where the data producers are. The second one are the data types that are relevant to, to be consumed. In this case, for example, CATS messages. And the last one is the contracted profile for processing capacity in, in each location where the data is, is coming to 5G Meta platform. This is important because it has a direct translation into the different sampling rates of the data output. This means that depending on the level that we contract, so a small, medium, large, advanced, the number of samples that we will receive will also vary, uh, be different. So uh, the, the more capacity has the, the profile that we contract, the more data samples we will get, okay? Um, finally, we will see uh, two different examples. The first one will show how 5G Meta works in order to allow fast prototyping, in order to allow that uh, third-party application and service developers focus just on the designing of the data queries. And then to use further examples, once we have the IoT topic, in order to consume or produce data samples from or to the Kafka system that is provided by the 5G Meta cloud platform. Because I will repeat again, 5G Meta is an IoT messaging platform, okay? This is the client the, that is valid in order to get the IoT topic to use. So then, once we have uh, used this client, another application can be used uh, in order to consume or produce data using the output topic that comes from this application. We will see it step by step, okay? So, um, first, the first step that we need to do is to select the role that uh, the application will have. So, a, co a consumer or a producer of events. So in this case, we select consumer. Okay, so once it is done, the next step is to select a target area. So we get all the files that are managed by the 5G Meta platform, and uh, we select one of them, okay? We can select for sure, not only one of them, but a set of them. So the as soon as we uh, click on Q, uh, this will mean that we the the list is closed and uh, this is the just the the, the areas that we uh, want to to get data from. Okay, the next step is um, to select the data type that is relevant to our uh, application. In this case, for example, in this area we have CATS messages and image messages. Okay, so we select CATS. Then the next step is according to the available profiles in terms of processing capacity, small, medium, large, or advanced, that has a different map in terms of number of CPU, availability of GPU, memory, and so on. Uh, we select, for example, in this case, a small. Okay. So we have, once we have done all the configuration, the client will provide to us the IoT topic to use, what is called in this case webinar 1, 1000, CADS small 34, and a set of um, data that is needed to use um, to connect to the Kafka to the Kafka system, okay, that is being provided by the 5G Meta Cloud platform. With that information, we can go to another examples that we uh, are providing that uh, in this case is a consumer of Kafka messages, where we have here the topic that we are using in order to be subscribed, and then we get the different messages that have been, been produced uh, through CATS messages into the 5G Meta platform from this location, from the, from the tile that we have selected, okay? So somehow what is being done by this by this client is, by this example, is once we have the topic, uh, consume 
from the third party application or service, the all the messages that come from the sensors and devices in real time. Then another possibility is to use another client to push events to a specific sensors and devices in a specific area. So we, we should use the same uh, example that I, I have presented here, but is, instead of using the role as a consumer, a producer of events, okay? It will return, again, a set of information in order to connect to a Kafka, top, to a, to a, to a Kafka system and the topic that we need to use, okay? This is just the, the, an example that we'll send all the time an event called uh, or with the body test 01, okay? And what we will see here is that all the sensors and devices that are using the different MEC infrastructures, the different edge infrastructures that we have in the different uh, mobile networks will receive the messages coming from the platform. So um, once uh, you are pushing, pushing messages to a specific area, all the sensors and devices in this area will receive these messages, okay? In the case of, of the cloud, we have Kafka. In the case of the sensors and devices, we are using AMQP, but in any case, the interface with the, with a, 5G meta from the third party application and developers is always Kafka. So this is all I want to explain. Um, I would like to also say that 5G meta will perform another webinar that is focused on data types and formats before the hackathon will take place in Lisbon in May. Okay. And I will invite to all of you to, to be there and not perform 5G Meta for uh, connected and automated mobility applications and services. So thank you for your attention. Giuseppe, the floor is all yours again. Thank you very much, Angela, for the amazing explanation and uh, journey that you brought into the pla uh, you brought to us to the platform. Yes, as we said, this is also a moment for Q and A. So if there are if there is any question, any uh, thing that wants to be addressed more specifically, uh, it can be uh, of course. Uh, uh, answered by Angel, not by me, of course, but um, there is in the um, chat and in the questions section the possibility to maybe raise these type of questions. So please go ahead. I hope it is clear for you how to uh, access to, oh, we have one from uh, um, Juncal Uriol. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Uh, can third parties query an area wider or thinner than the tile covered by an edge infrastructure? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I I I try to avoid to go into details because otherwise I think that uh, it will take uh, much more time. But uh, um, each um, each edge infrastructure w uh, is declaring uh, a specific tile that is supposed that it will cover and uh, all the messages that uh, are been produced in this area uh, is being managed by by this server. But in any case, uh, the third-party application or, or or service developer can declare or uh, ask for a for a tile that is wider or bigger this this the the tile of of an um, edge server or thinner than or smaller than the than this area. In and in in the case it is it is bigger. Um, the query will affect to different MEC infrastructures, to different servers that are producing this, this area. This way, a, a, an only request could cover more than one um, servers. But in the case, this is uh, the, the area that is 
targeted by the third-party application developer uh, is smaller than the tile of, of that is covered by a server. Uh, we are filtering all the messages in order to to connect only the messages that comes from the from the area that he is defining. So uh, somehow. Uh, the, um, the different um, systems in the in the 5G meta infrastructure is declaring the ideal coverage that uh, each one has. But in the case, the third-party application developer wants to pro wants to ask for a bigger area or for a smaller area. What we are doing is or merging different or aggregating different messages from different tiles or uh, splitting or dropping the messages that are not satisfying the the tile that is being declared by as a target area by the third party application developer i hope this answers i think it does but um we will actually start to collect a few more questions i will go uh but one is more general and the other one i think is gonna be more specific one is i saw license type uh, license type in the registration form what is that and where it can be configured and then we received uh, uh, both in uh, a few questions related to where uh, where are all these apis and samples codes available okay yeah going to the first question uh, the license is a, a feature that uh, that we are implementing uh, at the uh, at the moment so uh, uh, we um, the plan is to have it uh, already available in the hackathon, but at the moment it is something that is that is being developed and, and tested. And what it means is that depending on the intended use of the of the data by the third-party application or, uh, or service, uh, you will get access to some specific data sources or no, depending on what the data owner has declared in terms of. Uh, which one can use this data or uh, for what purposes cannot be be used so we match the um, the data owner uh, terms and conditions with the intended proposed um, use of 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 the third party application developer and this way uh, we limit the access to to some data samples but it is just to to how to say to to satisfy the, the the requirements coming from the data owners and the second one that is uh, uh, where these um, apis are, are available yeah right now uh, we have uh, um, these these apis as private just for for the consortium but uh, i hope that in the next month uh, so uh, more than one month earlier than the hackathon, uh, the, the APIs will be made public and, and this way uh, all the different uh, participants in the hackathon, we could, uh, they could start to, to have a look on the, on the APIs and get familiar with them. Thank you very much. Um, there are no other questions arrived, but we can still uh, uh, wait for a minute in the meantime uh, to see if there's any other question coming from the audience and i would like also to take then this moment to thank everybody for joining us and i hope and i'm going to see um, some of the names uh, that i see in this list uh, registered in our event on the eventbrite uh, event where uh, you can register for the hackathon and you can also specify whether or not you're coming uh, as part as member of team or alone and uh, for any other question related to the 5G Meta Hackathon, you can always uh, send a message to uh, the, our uh, um, functional mailbox, which is hackathon at gmeta-project.eu. Uh, of course, more information that can, can be found on the website. I will then share it in the chat so everybody can have a look. This is the chat. There you are. Past and send so so i don't see any other question coming so i guess this is the time where we can wrap up okay so okay. thank you everybody
thanks uh, angel thanks you again uh, for uh, for, uh, for this presentation i hope that makes uh, things more clear uh, in regards of the platform and how we use and uh, how uh, it works and i hope that uh, this is going to be a, uh, a further step to our road to lisbon so thank you very much everybody and uh, i think we can close it here thank you everybody thank you bye